weekend NFL live stream. Rich and Lefty, we're going to break down the games, give our opinions, some leans. Uh, real quick, wild card takeaways, I guess. Uh, talked a lot about just pick the winner. Um, all six winners also covered the spread. Sounds easier than it is. Just pick the winner. But, uh, yeah, five of the six home teams, they won. Five of the six favorites. Um, and last week in the video, we talked a lot about trends. You know, a lot of them being meaningless. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is instead of going through them now here, because I want to get to the games, I'll post a lot of trends. Um, in the NFL playoff thread. Um, trends that I, I find uh, are meaningful. Um, you know, last week a big trend was underdogs being 15-3 and three the last X amount of years. And, you know, I kept asking, well, why that, you know, why are underdogs, you know, doing well? If you can't answer why, then it's usually uh, meaningless. And there we go, five of the six favorites won and moved on. But... We'll save the trends for a uh, post in the Discord community. Starting with the first game, Saturday, 4.30 p.m. start. Cincy, Tennessee. We're looking at three and a half near, uh, now, pretty much across the board with a 47, 47 and a half. Uh, some books opened this up minus two and a half. Wasn't there long? Got right to three, and then eventually a three and a half. The uh, the Bengals got by the Raiders in the opening round. Um, they lost the box score, though. When you look at the box score, um, you know, it looks like a team that lost. If you're looking at Cincy's numbers, definitely not a team that won by a touchdown. Uh, now, yeah. I make this number here, Tennessee minus two and a half. So I'm not at three and a half. But, I mean, this Tennessee team... I've had trouble rating all year, either adjusting for injuries or even just subjective feel. I mean, there were points late in the year this season. I had them with a negative rating, you know, so if you rate Tennessee on their whole season, which that's what you got to do, basically, uh, there is that argument of them being the worst number one seed of all time. If you rate them on games when healthy or, you know, when they have Henry Brown and Julio, that's when you start adding in you know, or starting to add an extra rest, you can kind of get to that number. But, um, yeah, Tennessee's only yeah. played seven games when fully healthy. Uh, or, or I say fully healthy. No team's fully healthy. But with Henry, A.J. Brown, and Julio, they're 6-1, and one, straight up 5-2 and two against spread with wins over, like, Casey, Buffalo. Uh, so my power ratings show value on Cincy. Not exactly running to go bet them. Uh, what do you got, Rich? Well, this is one where, depending on how you use your numbers, you're going to come out with, you know, and I'm always talking about weighted numbers. I think when you get to late in the season and postseason and you're looking for predictive value, I think it's always better to use weighted numbers. And what I mean by that is numbers that factor the more recent games in slightly, yeah. just, just slightly more heavily than the older games. But when you look at the Titans, I'm not sure that going weighted is the way to go here. Um, if, you, if you're if you using the weighted numbers, you're looking at this team and how they were the last seven, eight weeks. And that's a, team, that's a team without Henry and not with A.J. Brown a lot. So yeah. I, th I think if you actually just for, the, for them, just on a case-by-case -case basis, go with your regular numbers instead of weighted, you might have a truer picture. Um, you know, I, my number doesn't get to this. Uh, my yeah. number, my number is short of two here. Um, but you know, I think what this number and and part of it probably is that that recently, you know, my numbers are factoring in these recent games. Yeah. And what this number is is this is the number that you you assign to them if you believe that not only Henry and AJ Brown are playing, but the offense clicks the way it did when they were on the field in the first six, seven, whatever it was, weeks of That's the season. That's a good point there, too. They don't automatically just jump in and then pick up where they left off. Yeah, that's something that, you know, I think is like, yeah, they're playing, but are they 100%? Are they, you know, and I'm talking more about Henry now. Brown has been back for a little while. Uh, if they get back to, 
right back to that style of play when they're pounding, 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 and then hitting crossing routes behind linebackers to A.J. Brown with, yeah. the, with the defense sucked up and he doesn't have a lot of uh, – guys to beat uh, running through the secondary. Um, they start playing that kind of football. Um, you know, then they, yeah, I see, I get the three and a half. Problem yeah. is with, with that is, you know, uh, that kind of, that kind of style of play lends itself to a real specific game script. You know, it's, it's either you're winning or the game is pretty close. Um, I'm actually someone who kind of believes in sticking with the run, especially early, even if you're down 14, 17, whatever, especially if that's your style of play. But uh, teams don't do it. You know, you see a team go down. If they go down early, are they going to be able to keep handing it off and then relying on play action? Is the play action going to be effective um, if they're down If they're um, down big? You know, right. I don't know. Um, I read an interesting study on play action. It, it's so such an interesting thing. Teams kind of tend to think that that the more you do it, right, that the less effective it becomes because people are just going to stop falling for the fakes. Right, makes um, sense. But it it actually isn't true if you look at the numbers. Play huh. action is one of these things that it has the opposite of diminishing returns. The more you do it, the more it's effective, actually, and. Um, yeah, because I think I don't know if it's guys start thinking, well, they're not going to do it again and again. It, it's something that is it pretty much holds its effectiveness really well. Yeah. Huh. Um, um, but um, so if they can just and, and and it works and it's funny when you read about when it works, it works even when there's not even a real threat of the run. You know, it goes against what you hear announcers say, like, oh, they got to be able to run the ball well to set up the play action. Right. It's the numbers don't actually even bear that out. Um, you can yeah. kind of just run play action. It's it's more of like like mentally the linebackers know that there's not a threat to run, but it's like an instinct that draws them forward uh, no matter what you know. And um, but anyway, get get into this game specifically. Um, I actually bet Cincy here. It's tough. I I haven't posted anything as a best bet. It just gets hard this time of year when there's four games. I'm betting the games, but I don't know if they rise to the level of what a best bet would be if there were 16 games on the board. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Absolutely, yeah. And, you know, there's that, you know, a lot of um, advantage players or sharps, they're not betting these sides in totals. There's no edge there. No, no, the line, the, the market is so tight and so efficient right now. Um, and, you know, I've just been on a kind of a, a roll lately that, you know, it's a little bit of regression to the mean, but like, Last week I I made four bets or five bets I should say I made five bets last week yeah. I posted I posted two as best bets one was Cincy and I kind of believe they got fucked um, the other one was uh, what was the other uh, Patriots uh, the Patriots yep that lost they got blown out but I also bet teaser with uh, Chiefs Bucks that hit I yeah. bet the Niners I bet I bet the Niners and I bet KC over the team total. Um, so I went 0 and 2 on plays I posted and 3 and 0 on yeah. the other ones. Oh, that's you know, the and, worst. I can't yeah, so, that. You know, so, but I do like Cincy here. I think there's line value here. I'm shocked that there hasn't been more market support for Cincy at 3.5 uh, to at least push it to 3. I think it's kind of flickered to 3 a couple of times this week. Um, but one of the reasons is Joe Burrow is, he's, there's a huge discrepancy in his game in terms of against the Blitz. He's not right. good when, when when teams bring more than four. He's not good, um, but he's he's great against you know a standard four man rush. And Tennessee is one of the least blitzing teams in the league. Only a handful of teams that blitz less than that them. Uh, only a handful of teams that blitz less than twenty percent of the time, and they're one of them. Um, and also, if you just kind of look at line value, a few weeks ago Tennessee was three and a half against Miami. And now right. they're now they're laying three and a half in a divisional round against a hot Cincinnati team. Um, you know, uh, I heard someone else make a good case for the matchup since he since he's lost some D linemen. Um, Cincinnati's biggest weakness on defense is middle depth routes over the middle. And if you yep. look at like if you look at like a heat chart of Tennessee's passing game, it's all middle depth over the middle to AJ Brown and Julio Jones. So that concerns me a little bit, but I did bet Cincinnati here 
um, plus three and a half. Speaking of that uh, weakness in the middle, uh, middle of the field, the passing game, I was talking about that last week and thought the Raiders would go to Waller more. The few times they did, he had success. He was picking up big chunks, but they didn't really exploit that middle of Cincy's defense, which is like, you know, it's glaring, you know, the weakness yeah, there that I they have. said something about it. They got, they started getting to it late. Um, yeah. Man, there was some frustrating. I think I might have said I had the Bengals, but I had the Raiders last week. That's what I meant to say, the opposite side of it. Um, but the Raiders, there were some frustrating plays there. They He hit Deshaun Jackson over the middle on a play that yeah. there was no safety behind him. If he just turned up field with it, it would have been a touchdown. I uh, think instead. he misjudged the amount of time. He looked like he scampered out of bounds there. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And, and God, did I hate spiking the ball and wasting a play there. You just, that's, that's a, um, nobody does that anymore. Everyone's, you know, trained to get your offense to the line and organized and you have a play, a right. predetermined play that you run instead of a spike, if, whether it's a, a fade to wall or a fade to whoever you at least get a you know take a shot with it they right. had plenty of, you know if there's t- if there's 12 seconds left i get it there was 35 seconds left and it was first and goal yeah. yeah i warned you about the frustration of that game when i told you that booger mcfarlane was it booger no not booger mcfarlane who's the ref oh uh, jerome Boger, yeah I know. Boger, and he did yeah. uh he yeah up. he fucked up huge Biggest, biggest uh, botch call of the week was that whistle. Yeah. Um, this should have been a dead ball, and that was the difference in the cover. Yeah, for uh, sure. So this Tennessee, since he came from me, is tough. I have Tennessee on like a numbers grab to win the Super Bowl. I took plus 1,200 when it kind of looked certain that they were going to be the one seed. So, you know, I took them there. But uh, That's sharp. I like that. With the one you know, seed. so um, – I you know if you look at it that way, I basically have them on the money line here, you have, but you have liability there, yeah. yeah. So and I hate to, there's no way I'm laying three and a half now when three was available. I just won't do that. But I am taking a look at the first half with Tennessee. Uh, yeah, Tennessee, the first half scoring margin there, they're fifth in the league with like plus sixty. Cincy's sixteenth uh, or seventeenth in the league with only plus five, and it flips in the second half. Tennessee then turns to 16th in the league in score margin in the second half, Cincinnati third. Uh, huh. Only two times has a divisional favorite trailed at halftime and come back and won and covered. Um, so there's kind of like um, that whole, I, I don't know, like I feel like it sets up good for the first half, but more so I don't want to lay three and a half either. Yeah, right. And, I see what you're you saying. Know, and then we get the whole Derrick Henry coming back. What is the first half? Did they go under three with it? Uh, yeah. I, last time I checked, I think I can get like uh, two or minus one and a half or something. Yeah, because sometimes, especially when the game has a low total, you'll see that the the, the game for the line will be three and a half, and the, they'll only make it three on the first half. You know, they don't want anyone getting that anything less than a field goal. Yeah, um, I'm checking now for the uh, updated line. But, uh, yeah, it's two and a half now. It looks like at Circa. Yeah, um, but um, I, I'm buying into. I know this is the big talk of the week here with Derrick Henry, Tennessee's running game, but yeah. it's not for the same reasons. Um, you know, they want to run. They can kind of exploit that um, the Cincy's recent injuries there up front. But Henry opens up the passing game. I feel you know, t- Tannehill's four yards more per, per attempt uh, with Henry. Yeah, he does. You know, um, and then when play- Tannehill, what's that? that play action game you know, yeah it's, right yeah. and when um again just we don't i just feel when Tannehill and he has both aj brown and julio his numbers dramatically different you know uh his success rate 53 percent equal to rogers best qb in the league is epa plus 17 to minus 29 when both are off the field uh but um but then again, Burrow, that ceiling is so high for him. Uh, yeah. I, I think the only, I, I just think it might be too much on his shoulders. Like when you look at pathways to victory, the only one I really see for Cincy is winning with Burrow just torching them uh, because yeah. I don't see that. I don't think they're going to be able to have much success running it. Cincy, the last seven weeks, um, 
85 yards or less running the game, running the ball. Uh, Tennessee kind of got a sneaky, solid run defense. Only three times this whole year has a team uh, ran over 90 yards on them. Uh, now, of course, Burrow could torch uh, this defense. It could happen, of course. But I get young QB making his first playoff road start. Um, QBs making first road playoff start, like legit starters, nine and five, uh, 15 straight up end against the spread, 28 INTs, 25 TDs. Only like a 58% completion rate. But uh, like I said, I don't know if I'm going to have a play on this game. I'm going to root in Tennessee on the money line or basically for the future. So um, I'm kind of copping out on that one. But uh, if I had to bet it, I would lean Titans, which is crazy because uh, I've been so down on them all year. Yeah. But, Even uh, at what, three, and, three and a half that you lean there? At three and a uh, half? You know, actually, yeah, right. Three and a half. Forgot about like yeah. you have to factor in the spread. Uh, yeah. I don't know. You know what? Yeah. No, no, I mean, pass, listen, I, think. I think yeah, I'm going to even games... pass. Yeah. I don't think I could take three and a half. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I've heard but... people who make good cases for Tennessee, but then they say the same thing. Like, yeah. if it gets to three, if it gets to three, they'll, they'll probably take fire, but three and a half is tough. Yeah. How efficient these markets are. So. But, um, yeah, first yeah. half, Tennessee, I guess, if I had to make a play on this. But yeah. uh, we'll move right along here. Um, the night Saturday game, 8-15 start, San Fran, Green Bay. Uh, this Green Bay line was six the past 48 hours, and uh, then we get some news yeah. today. Yeah. Uh, that looks like five it moved down to five and a half. Yeah, uh, I guess, like, Bosa's going to be a well, – Bosa, Garoppolo, and Warner, Fred Warner, the linebacker there, they were – uh, at practice today. So I think that kind of budged the line a little bit. It was interesting looking at these openers and seeing like sharp books, you know, shaded towards San Fran, square books kind of shaded towards Green Bay. Uh, there was like uh, kind of like buy points on plus six and then minus four. Um, yeah. But there was definitely a discrepancy there from like the, you know, sharper books, Pinnacle, uh, Bookmaker, and Chris, like, they weren't as quick to adjust up to six as uh, I mean, yeah, up to six as other books, but uh, yeah. again, this is another tough game. Cause I have San Fran to win the super bowl. Uh, also had them to win the NFC, but that didn't get there. Obviously. Uh, what do you, what do you mean? The NFC West? You mean? Yeah. I had the, uh, to yeah. the division. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah good yeah. thing you brought that up. Been confusing, yeah. but um, yeah, I had them to win the NFC division, uh, their division basically. But um uh, yeah, I had the Rams at last week. I had the Rams to win the division, but I needed the Niners to get the ten wins, and both happened because oh, the Seahawks yeah. beat the Cardinals. <laughs> right, right. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Um, my number on this game: Green Bay minus three. Uh, yeah. So, and that's with adding two and a half points for home field advantage, which is about the max. But um, you know, especially when you have a team from warm weather climates playing in the cold, there should be double digit wins. Three at the number three obviously shows value on San Fran, but when you start to look at Green Bay and how much they've benefited from this bye week, you know, they're improving yeah. on the old line, pass rush, secondary, they're getting some real impact players back. Um, they're going to be the healthiest they've been in months, especially on the old line. But uh, yeah, what do you make this game? Yeah, I'm right around three as well. I, um, I like, I get why the number's up there because even if these guys play, uh, it makes a huge difference, you know, playing with injuries or playing 100% healthy. Right. Green Bay, Green Bay just came off a bye. They've gotten fully healthy. Uh, Niners had to play last week, and yeah. you know they they finished that game leaking oil, you know, just sputtered across the finish line. Jimmy G with a hurt shoulder and hand. Uh, Bosa was out of the game. Warner was out of the game. Um, and, you know, and so I think that's what you're getting. This number is Jimmy G is two different guys when he's hundred percent healthy and when he's banged up, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, uh, and I think the, I think the people were assuming Warner and Jimmy G would play. I think Bosa was what everyone was waiting on. And I think yeah. that's why you saw this move down to five and a half. I bet this yesterday at six, I talked to somebody who said, you know, Bosa 
If you want to bet the Niners, do it now because when the Bosa news comes out, it will go down to five and a half. And I think six is huge here in these division games because of the overtime factor. If this goes to overtime, six is such a key number because they don't kick the extra point. Good point. Yeah, good you point. Know? Um, and so I like six. I don't like five and a half. I did bet six. Um, you know, there's some things I don't love. It's not perfect. Like these, like, you know, like we said, these markets are very efficient in the NFL playoffs. Um, Jimmy G, even if he plays, we've seen him play very poorly when not fully healthy. The second half of the Tennessee game comes to mind where he just fell apart. Um, but the, the, the angle that I really like here is this. Green Bay has only played a few games against teams in the top 10 uh, EPA per play rushing this year. Uh, one was against San Francisco earlier in the year, week three. It yeah. was 30 to, 30 to 28 Packers. San Francisco was favored by three in that game, I think three and a half. With no um, Elijah Mitchell. Yeah, and that's, yeah, that's what I'm getting to. Green Bay was definitely undervalued at that point. Um, they're definitely better now than we thought they were, for sure. But so is San Francisco. San Francisco has played great football of late. They beat Rams in week seven or 18, beat the Cowboys in Dallas last week. Um, you know, the other game when Green Bay faced the top 10 or what they faced Seattle, which was kind of like a weird thing that Seattle was the top rushing team. But the other yeah. game when they faced the top 10 uh, team in rush EPA per play was Christmas Day against Cleveland. It was in yeah. Green Bay. Cleveland ran for 219 yards. And it came down to the last possession in Green Bay won 24 to 22. But that was largely because Mayfield turned the ball over four times in that game. So they let up a ton of yards on the ground. It was a 24, 22, 20 game and Mayfield turned the ball over four, four times. Yeah. So here, so we've got a comp here of a much, of a good rushing team having some success against Green Bay. Then we factor in that San Francisco is a much better, more well-rounded team than Cleveland with a much better quarterback. And, and like you said, when these teams played in week three, San Francisco's rushing attack was not what it is now. Um, their leading rush of that game was Trey Sermon, I think. Yeah. Um, Debo Samuel had not yet emerged as part of their running attack, uh, and neither had Elijah Mitchell, like you said. Um, I'm nervous about the San Francisco injuries, but just way too many points here, I think, especially given San Francisco's style of play. Um, I think they've got, you know, maybe the best play caller left in this thing. Uh, I'm taking the points, you know, which is kind of I'm taking a stand here because even I have them 40 to one on a Super Bowl future, so I need them outright. But I like the points too. Yeah, I'm in the same exact boat as you, um, and basically for the same exact reasons, I did take plus six at minus one fifteen. Uh, kind of caught it moving off a of five and a half today once that Boza news hit, but. Yeah. You know, I have that future, too. I bet it very small. Definitely not enough to make it a best bet. Um, you know, and again, like Jimmy G, shoulder thumb on throwing arm, in cold elements. It's got me a little scared, but, I mean, six has to have value. Um, huge advantage in the trenches for San Fran. Uh, their run game versus 31st overall run D, like you were saying. Uh, Green Bay yeah. 28th in explosive runs allowed. 30th in EPA uh, run defense, um, 30th in success rate run defense. Um, and like you said, Green Bay, they haven't even faced any top run teams. The Cleveland was the only one and they got gashed. So, um, yeah. uh, San and, Francisco's O line was just opening up massive holes yeah. the whole first half. It was a bloodbath. And going kind of like a step further, too. Um, if you notice San Fran, they, their run strength is like those outside zones, kind of. And San Fran, good blocking wide receivers and tight ends. Green Bay's weakest part of their defense is um, defending like outside runs. I should say weakest part of their run defense. They get hit up on the outside. So um, yeah. and I, I have a note here to ask you because I know you're like on uh, football outsider a lot. Um, have you seen anything about like um, when a team DVOA is better but underdogged? I ha I haven't wrote that's like a system that I haven't. Okay, seen. so San Fran's five points better in unadjusted DVOA. Yeah. Um and there's gotta be some type of correlation to like uh that covering or something, but I don't know if like um 
Oh, yeah, that's interesting. I don't know, like, but I thought it's I saw a... something on the site talking about it, but I don't know. But um... you may have, you may have. I um, I I just downloaded the spreadsheet this week. I haven't read any of their oh, yeah. their content. Let this me week. know if there's something there. I would think, you know, the team that's rated better DVOA and their dogs, there should yeah. be some type of correlation there. But yeah, uh, I mean, that's the whole point of that DVOA thing is to have some sort of predictive. Uh... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Green Bay, they've played six playoff teams this regular season, won 6-0 and against the spread. So it's not like fading Rodgers at home uh, in Lambeau is uh, you know going to be a cakewalk. But the spread's the ultimate equalizer, plus six, too many, I think. Yeah. All right. We're on to Sunday. Rams, Bucks. Um, yeah, looking at three right now. Uh, three, some... three's a, the plus three is a little juiced, right? Yeah, no, it's actually a, a thin three. You can get uh, Brady minus three. No, and I mean even the money. Other side. Oh, I yeah, mean the yeah, other yeah. Side. Um, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's a juice three for the Rams. Um, total sitting at 48. Not much movement on any of these totals, really. Uh, yeah, they're it... so. <laughs> What's that? No, I, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, it's going to be win, uh, looking at double digit wins here. Uh, now, for me here, it's tough to upgrade either of these teams based on last week's results. I think it had more to do with the opponent than anything. Now, I make uh, Tampa Bay minus three and a half. That's with two and a half points for home field advantage, which is definitely on the high side, but it's a dome team outdoors and weather. Um, Tampa Bay home and away splits are you know, has a pretty big difference. Um, this game for me is probably the toughest matchup uh, because the Rams do have pretty clear uh, matchup advantages. But, you know, for me, at the end of the day, it's, uh, you know, Stafford versus Brady. Brady at home in the playoffs. He's won 17 of his last 20 playoff games. Uh, no question this offense uh, looked a bit out of sync. Um, wide receiver miscommunication last week. And, uh, this is going to be the first real test for the Bucks without Godwin and AB. Um, you know, they really haven't faced a team, um, you know, equal or better than them without those guys. And there's that question mark with all pro um, blind side tackle that kid Tristan Wirfs. I don't even know if he's playing. I got a question mark there, but um, great wrestler. Yeah, that's right. He wrestled too, right? Um, that video of him jumping out of a pool. That's one of the craziest things I've ever seen. I don't even know how that's possible, but um, what yeah. do you make this? Yeah, um, I have this game uh, short of three. It's in the, you know, 1.8 is the number I've got factoring in the uh... – Oh, no, okay, that's We got pre, a little bit of a discrepancy pre, there. No, no, yeah, that's pre – I'm sorry. That's pre uh, own field, so 1.8, 1.8. Yeah, I have it around three and a half. Okay. So, but I yeah. – yeah, but I um, – I – but actually, you know, I don't like Tampa here. Again, that's a number that is based on all the cumulative numbers. You know, that's not a number that I've then subjectively adjusted for injuries. You know right. what I mean? I've got to kind of do that after the fact. So I don't have a ton on this game um, as far as like uh, breakdown, but I do like uh, Rams. I bet it a little uh, just earlier before we got on here when I saw it was yep. three juice. Um, I took that, took the three. Um, I think narrative people are looking at this like, oh, it's Tom Brady. They're the Super Bowl defending champs, blah, blah, blah. I think you get a little value uh, that way on this. Uh, yep, for sure. Uh, those, those people coming into the market during the playoffs. Um, I like the Rams. I like the Rams to win this game actually outright, um, but I'll yeah. take the point. Um, I think the way Rams offense is clicking, the wind thing makes me nervous. Uh, that was not the forecast early in the week. It was looking like no weather. That makes me a little bit nervous, but man, Cooper Cup, I, I, this, he's, he's playing the way, you know, I mean, one of the greatest stretches of play from a wide receiver that I've ever seen in my life. Um, and the, the, uh, the um, Tampa's pass rush, what they were able to do to Pat Mahomes last year in the Super Bowl, they're not, they're not playing that kind of defense right now. Nope, they're not, not at all. Um, and and you know Brady is missing some serious weapons. I think the Godwin loss is huge. Um, I you know I I like I like the Rams here, um, and I like them to win the game. Um, and I'm taking the points so far. I might also take a little on the money line here. 
Yeah, and I think um, money line you got to do it with the dogs that whole pick the winner like ninety. Yeah, you're right. You know, so if you're betting yeah. any dogs, I'd suggest uh, you know definitely play money line as well. Uh, yeah, I have to agree. I think on the the Rams side there, um, Tampa Bay blitz heavy team. Uh, that's how they generate pressure. Uh, they basically only get pressure when they blitz. Stafford's really good versus the blitz, but it's a kind of a catch 22 for, uh, you know, Tampa Bay, uh, their weakness really is defending the downfield pass. So do you blitz and lose past defenders in order to get the pressure or not blitz and kind of let Stafford sit back there? Um, something that's something I'm kind of like interested uh, in seeing is how uh, Bowles plays that one, you know, cause he's one of those like older stubborn guys. I see him like not switching it up and just sticking to the blitz, but um, yeah. yeah. Um, I actually like the Rams pass rush as a factor in this game too. Um, uh, Brady rush up the middle is ooh, yep. uh, his, one of his kind of kryptonite rush straight up the middle, get him off his spot. Um, and sure. they, they were they were wreaking havoc up the middle last week against Arizona. Uh, Kyler Murray was running for his life for a good part of that game, forced him into some turnovers that way. Um, you know, you get Donald up the middle, Miller on the edge. It uh, I don't know that we've fully seen what they're capable of when they start getting after the passer. I also think the Rams are more battle tested. You know, coming through the NFC West. Uh, and the schedule they played down the stretch, much tougher than the uh, NFC South Division schedule and the schedule that Tampa played down the stretch. Have you seen? Have you been in the community at all today? No. Uh, so just before we got on stream, um, I posted the Bucks schedule because uh, it just showed on ESPN like the their schedule. It shows the game highs in passing and running. So Brady has had game highs for passing yards in every single game but if you look at their schedule versus the opposing offenses he's only played two good quarterbacks Josh Allen and Dak and I guess three if you want to add Stafford in there and they lost that game but uh he he has faced nobodies for quarterbacks um yeah you know the only thing is it's just um I haven't bet anything on this game yet uh But it's just tough to, you know, trust Stafford in a big game when it's like a equal or like better opponent. I feel like when he's going to have to make some big time throws. Um, I know. You know, me, that's the tough part of this game. Is he going to throw a bad pick six? He's playing outside. Uh, the right now. Factor. It's the thing I don't like about it. You know, uh, we're not going to get a perfect handicap in any of these oh, games. Of There's always going to be a doubt. Yep. Yeah, it, so. um, you know, he's had he's been able to have like a lot of. um you know, the, the run game's like been bailing him out kind of, you know, Rams are like a run first team now before they, before like the buy, they passed over 60. Yeah. Now they're like down to like 45%. Uh, yeah. Pass. They were committed to the run last week for sure in the playoff game. And I kind of have a conspiracy theory there. I think Stafford's not healthy. Yeah. You know, I mean, how is cup still <laughs> the yeah. numbers that cup is still putting up though? Are right. Insane. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, Stafford yeah. and the picks and stuff like that. Every time he tries to force the ball downfield, but um, so the way I kind of look at this too to sum this game up, um, already fading Rogers at home. I can't fade Brady at home, right? You just can't yeah. do that, you know. So, uh, yeah. you know, that's a whole like kind of bullshit narrative. But I just don't want to have tickets on. Uh, no, again, best Rogers quarterback is a best quarterback. Sometimes is a. Sometimes we overcomplicate it. You just, you know, right. simplify it, take the best quarterback. And... Uh, the game I'm most interested in, um, I guess if I had to pick one, is going to be that Sunday night game, uh, Buffalo at KC. Yeah. Um, yeah, they yeah, they definitely that's... they definitely schedule these games like in order of intrigue, basically. Like the Saturday afternoon games are always like the boring, you know, it used to be like Bills, Texans or something. Yeah. And, and, you know, and then it worked its way up to a, a prime time, you know, it really great game on Sunday. For the Saturday game, Cincy and San Fran, they get to play. They lose one day and get to play the team with the first round by. I know. You I know, know. NFL great. did them no favors there. Yeah. 
but yeah, Buffalo at KC. Um, lines now down to basically a pick them. Uh, KC minus one, one and a half, depending on where you're looking. Open two and a half. It's been uh, pretty much bet down. Uh, these are two of uh, the top rated teams from the, the two top rated teams for me. Uh, both would be favorites versus anyone in the playoffs based on my power ratings. I make KC two and a half. Um, and the way I look at this game, a couple points each way isn't really going to matter in this game. I feel like uh, I had an open teaser from last week with Tampa Bay. I closed it with Buffalo to get plus eight and a half just because the number was two yeah. and a half. So going through those key numbers, three of seven, that's optimal. But I feel like Buffalo has the highest ceiling for any team. Uh, nobody's beating Buffalo if they played like they did last week. Buffalo yeah, has a lot of say. Yeah, like Buffalo has a ton of things like that I like about teams. You know, point differential, they're number one. Um, they should have two more wins than they do. Uh, number one in Pythag with 13.3 wins. But uh, what I'm curious, to, uh, to, uh, what do you make this game? Um, I've got this game just right around three, right yep. around three for the Chiefs. Yeah, yep, uh, shade under, but uh, I like the Chiefs here. You know, the number isn't really like enough. That's not really why I like it. Like, right. I mean, my number, my number. I mean, yep. the number is the reason I like it. I'm getting Pat Mahomes under a under a field goal. Um, I don't know how many times you're gonna get that in the next decade you project out you know yeah i don't know how, i don't know how many times you know if, if you compare his career to brady's um how many times was brady favored by less than a field goal at home and in, in the course right. of his career with the patriots it would have to been less than you can count on one hand um and i said the same thing back in uh you know earlier in the season when these two teams played i thought that the chiefs had kind of bottomed out in the market at that point well, we, we found out, you know, that they hadn't, they struggled for a, a few more weeks after that. Yeah. Um, I remember we talked about this one actually yeah. on the phone while you were away on, yeah. on this one. And, uh, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'll tell you, I think, you know, basically what I think is you got the best absolute ceiling out of Buffalo last week. Yeah. And ev- everybody saw it. And now you're actually getting kind of them as kind of like it's odd against the Chiefs, but they are kind of like I believe like the more narrative y kind of public side here that everyone saw them just absolutely dismantle uh the Patriots. They played their perfect game. I don't know that they have another one of those in them. There's actually a stat that if you look at um when Josh Allen had a QB rating above a, you know, like a certain number, like a real, like a, like a, you know, like a unbelievable game, like he had last game. Yeah. His following game tends to be there tends to be a drop off. Um, interesting. Yeah. So, um, I wish I had the exact stat in front of me. Um, but that he, is he's stat. down. Yeah. His numbers are all down this year. Yeah. From last yeah. year. Yeah. From last year. Yeah. Um, you know, I think I think that you know. Buffalo is going to have to play their best game like that. But I think the Chiefs have multiple. I don't think the Chiefs have to play their best game and win this game. Um, the Chiefs were fooling around in the second half of last week. And they went, you know, they 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 won going away. I also think uh, the game earlier in the um, the year that Buffalo won, uh, Chris, uh, who's the def- uh, defensive line of the Chiefs, Chris. Uh, I know who you're talking about. Can't think of his name. The Chiefs, Chris Jones. Chris Jones. Yeah, he didn't play. He didn't play in the uh, the first game. I think that's you know they they turned into a team that really uh, had a good pass rush as as uh, time went on right. this year. Um, you know, but to me, there's not a huge you know there's not I I can get into all the numbers and everything on this one, but to me, keeping it simple. I've got Mahomes laying less than a field goal. Um, they've been on a roll. Uh, uh, you know, they're not having the problems they had early in the season with the drops and the and uh, the other issues. Um, they've solidified their offensive line, which was kind of their kryptonite last year. Um, uh, I think this team's going to the Super Bowl. I think this team's going to win the Super Bowl. Um, 
and uh, I'll take them laying less than a field goal here. Wow, Super Bowl, huh? I could see yeah. it. Uh, this will be yeah. their probably their toughest matchup, I think. Maybe I'm not betting I that. I mean, I'm not yeah. betting that. I don't think there's value in it. I, I actually think the Niners could make the Super Bowl. Um, I'm hoping. Like, you yeah, know? Uh, um, that's why I bet it. You know, I never. You know, people like kind of bet make these bets to to hedge, but I I never make a bet on a future that I don't actually think the team can actually win it. You know what I mean? Right. Like. You have to believe they can actually win it to make those bets. Yeah, for me, it's it's not the main re- – like, you know, I, I feel like you got to make the bet if you feel – you know, you got to have some part of you has to feel like it will win. But um, yeah. that Tennessee bet that I made, it's strictly like hoping they win this game and then I can hedge. So Yeah, that was a uh, smart bet, just doing the, doing the calculations money-wise. You take a team that's going to buy – you get one game into the AFC Championship, you know. Yeah, I like that. knowing that, that they'll most likely be a, a favorite too. So I, I like at least in this game. So if I did want to, you know, hedge off even now, but uh, and yeah. I got enough really on it. But uh, this it's part, hard when you're hedging with a team that's a dog. You know, it's very oh, yeah. hard to do. Exactly. So, um, but I'm sorry. Buffalo, go ahead. Wait, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was saying. I'm sorry. I cut you off. Okay. Go ahead. Um, this Buffalo KC game, I'm not really looking at the. The side, I, I got a best bet on the over in this one, which is scary. I mean, the number's gone against me a little bit, but I'm not really even surprised. It's such a huge total, uh, especially for, like, you know, a playoff game. But yeah. and nobody can say, like, their number or projection show value on an over when it's this high. But, um, right, you know, there's only nine games in the past 20 years that there's been a total of 54 or higher in the uh, playoffs. Um. And if and it's it's these, but these two teams, though, I mean, you know, throw it out the window. These, right. these two teams, yeah. And it's eight and one to the over. Those, those, those games, you know, so high total. I mean, I'm not, I'm not. Where I mean, both would you offenses, be surprised if they both scored thirty? I wouldn't. No, I'm not. Yeah. I mean, that's what I mean. That's what I'm thinking. Like uh, uh, both yeah. offenses, I feel like can have success. Um, what what did they score last week? I mean, that's what I mean. Talk about like not overthinking it. Um, yeah. Forty-seven for the Bills, and uh, forty-three for uh, Casey. Forty-three for the Chiefs. Yeah, actually, yeah. First time since nineteen ninety-nine, two teams playing each other after forty-plus point wins. Yeah. Um, Casey, best offense in the league. When you look at EPA success rate, um, they've punted the least out of any team in the NFL. Um. Buffalo has the number one rated defense. I've talked about that all year where I feel like it's skewed, but this is also going to be the first time game, you know, playing with the loss of Trey white, where it could actually be felt that uh, they played Zach Wilson. And although I'm a fan of Mac Jones, they played him twice. He's not someone that's going to really uh, exploit, you know, uh, missing Trey white. I think KC can get on them there. Um, KC's defensive numbers are solid late you know, as of late, late in the season, but start looking at opponents, some of the QBs they face, it looks a little different. And um, I think Buffalo can score and they'll push pace. Bill's only punted uh, four times. No, once in the past four games I I have written down. Uh, but um, yeah, over for me. Yeah, there for I like that too. Yeah. I'm not scared of that big number, but it is. Is that a uh, best bet for you? Yeah, it's a best bet. It, it was posted. I took it at 55. It's down to look. I'm looking at 53 and a half right now, 54. Yeah. So that's always that's tough. one where the market support doesn't really scare me. I like your point and not overthinking this. It's, you know, when the, when the number, when the number gets that high and it's the historical data, it's going to get a little resistance from guys who just play numbers, you know, but yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But not many bets you know, that are going to make the official best bet for us. But, uh, yeah, hopefully that's good enough to kind of give you guys an opinion where we're thinking. I have a ton yeah. of trends and, uh, you know, different things. I'm going to post in the community uh, in the NFL playoff channel. Um, so uh, keep a lookout for that. Um, and anyone on YouTube listening, uh, sign up link will be in the description. If you want to get involved with the betting network uh, team, you know, uh, got betting tools. We got a video course. Um, so 
Uh, we do these live streams pretty much weekly, but uh, I think that is going to wrap this one up. You got anything, Rich? That's it. All right. Good luck, everybody. Till next time. Good luck. Let's get them.